Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing the best of luxury beauty 2021 so far. So I went through all of the purchases I've made this year and I pulled out my favorites. These are all 10 out of 10, highly recommend. I'm so happy that I did add them to my collection. I know I've mentioned it a couple times, but just in case you're new, I'm doing my best to be a very smart consumer this year. I think a lot of us are. Of course, I have a YouTube channel dedicated to luxury product reviews, so I'm going to purchase more than the average consumer, but my goal is to be incredibly picky, so picky that at the end of the year, when I look back at all of the purchases I made, I'm very happy with everything. Now, I'm not perfect. Unfortunately, there have been a few misses already and there are some products that just didn't make this list. I wanna get started. It will come as no surprise to you guys that there are a lot of blushes here. Blush seems to be the product of 2021. And I'm going to begin with one of my favorites. This is the Hermes blush. This is Rose Pommettes and I also picked up Rose Plume, along with both of the blush brushes, which I also really love. I think these are incredible compacts. I know they did receive a lot of criticism. This isn't going to make everybody's best of luxury beauty, but I love them. I think the design is so chic and Hermes deserves a lot more credit for the beauty products they have launched. They've tapped a lot of their fashion designers in-house to help design the packaging. I think the texture is incredible. They are very silky smooth. They don't have any shimmer to them, but I find it to be a lot more flattering. So I'm incredibly happy with both of these. Yes, they are expensive. And I know there was a bit of a snafu with the refillable packaging. I picked up two compacts, but I guess when I do need to refill them, if that does happen, it's going to be a bit of a headache because for whatever reason, they glued them in here. <sighs> Not the best decision. The white and brushed gold make a killer combination. It just looks so elegant and refined. And I love that they included the Hermes crest on the front. I'm really happy with the shades I picked up. I'm wearing Rose Plume on my cheeks today. I think they're just incredibly flattering. It feels very luxurious in my opinion. So I love these. I know not everybody does. I'm a big fan. I'm looking forward to whatever else they come out with. I've also been incredibly pleased with the new Pat McGrath Labs blushes. This is the Divine Blush Collection. I have two shades, Nymphette and Nude Venus. This one is Nude Venus. I think these are beautiful. They're smooth, they're creamy, they're really pigmented. In fact, you have to be incredibly light-handed versus the Hermes, which are a bit silkier. With this, I think it's easy to go overboard. I learned that the first time, but as long as you're light-handed, you tap off the excess from your brush before you apply it to the cheek, I think you'll be really happy with them. And I think for the price, you get a ton of product. I love the design embossed on top. I love the packaging. Everything about them is really nice. I have a third shade on its way to me, Divine Rose, which I believe is a bit plummier than the two I picked up, which are just basically light pink. But the Pat McGrath Labs, both of them have a very slight gold sheen to them. I prefer the Hermes. Between the two, I love them both, but I like that the Hermes doesn't have the shimmer because I find it to be a little bit more flattering. You have to be somewhat more careful when applying the Pat McGrath Labs, but these are more pigmented than the Hermes. So pros and cons to both. I love them both. I'm happy I added both to my collection this year. Another one of the best luxury products of the year and definitely one of the best Chanel launches of 2021 is this Fleur de Printemps Blush and Highlighter Duo. It is stunning. I can't remember the last time I loved one of their complexion products like this. The shades are so beautiful. It's kind of hard to tell, but there was this really pretty camellia design embossed right on top of the powders. The blush is a beautiful shade. The highlighter is a beautiful shade. A lot of times with palettes like this, not just from Chanel, from any brand, I might really like one half of the palette or one of the products, maybe a handful of the products, but then there's something else in there that isn't as great. But in this case, both shades are incredibly flattering. I knew I would like the blush and I thought I would like the highlighter, but I didn't realize just how beautiful it was going to be. It gives off quite a bit of pink because you can see it has a very rosy undertone and it really shows up on the skin. It's so nice, just an incredible compact. I love their limited edition pieces like this. This was really the star of the entire spring collection this year. Well, this and one of the highlighters we're gonna talk about. I picked up two face palettes so far this year and I love them both. And I've never been a huge face palette person, 
but these are the exception to the rule. The first one is from By Terry, and I have the palette from last year as well. I definitely prefer this one. It's the Brightening CC palette in Beach Balm. I have Sunny Flash from last year. That one is still really nice. I like both of them, but you can see the exterior packaging is amazing. Inside you get a highlighter, two blush shades, I think this is such a fun color, and you get a bronzer. The entire palette smells a little bit like rose. And the price is really great as well. I want to say these run around $50, $55 for four face products from By Terry. I think that's a steal. I would much rather continue to collect these versus the Hourglass face palettes that come out once a year. Those I rarely touch. I prefer this. I like the texture of the products inside and I just think they're more user friendly. And then the second cheek palette I picked up that I absolutely love is this gorgeous palette from Christian Louboutin. La Palette is so stunning. I love the red back. It says Louboutin. The studs, it's just very on brand. So I have So Delicate. There are three different color combinations and I picked this up from Nordstrom. I think that's the only place I've seen it available so far, but I imagine it will roll out to the other higher end department stores. I realized something after my initial review because it was the first time I ever tried it, it was on camera, but I mentioned that this blush and this blush looked pretty similar on the cheek. Well, what was happening is that this coral kind of warm peachy blush right here, it has a bit of a sheen to it. Not a shimmer, but luminosity. Well, the pink blush is flat matte, so this, was looking a little bit darker and pinker because when I was looking forward to the camera, the sheen wasn't reflecting a lot of light. But when I turned to the side, then I noticed that, oh yes, okay, it looks very peach on the cheek. I could really tell a big difference the next day whenever I was doing my makeup over on the vanity and it has a bit more even lighting than my setup right here. And I noticed, oh yeah, the coral, the peach is definitely peach. I knew something was wrong because when I swatched them on my arm, they looked completely different. I thought there's no way they are swatching so different, but then they look the same on the cheek. It doesn't make sense. So that's what was happening there. If that was a concern of yours that they wouldn't be different enough, rest assured that they do look very different on the face. And I also really like this highlighter. I'm not typically a huge fan of the bright pearly highlights. I like something with more of a peachy pink undertone. But I think this is so pretty. I've been wearing this palette and the eyeshadow palette a lot lately, ever since I picked them up. They feel sort of gummy to the touch. It's like this cream powder hybrid. It's very interesting. Reminds me a little bit of, is it Westman Atelier? There's another brand, maybe Chantecaille has a product that's similar where it has a bit of a bounce to it. I'm so impressed with the quality of the product, the quality of the packaging. I think I might've been the only one with high expectations. I expected it to be amazing and in my opinion it is definitely one of the best things I've picked up so far this year. And I like the fact that it's refillable. This is even sturdier and I would say higher quality than the Hermes refillable packaging. The one and only cream blush to make the list is this Hourglass Vanish Blush Stick. I picked up the shade Sacred. I think I got this from the Sephora Spring Savings event think. Did I or didn't I? Maybe even a little bit before the hand. I love this. I love the shade. I love the texture. I love the pigmentation. This is probably my favorite hourglass product that I've ever purchased. I just think it is so nice and it reminds me a lot of the hourglass lipsticks which are creamy and rich and just beautiful on the lips. They kind of hug the lip. That's how I feel about this blush. A little bit is all you need. It's not really glossy or balmy. I prefer cream blushes like this that don't feel sticky or tacky or thick on the skin. It doesn't feel like it's clogging my pores. And once you blend it out, it kind of dries down almost to a powdery finish. I just think it is so nice. I lucked out with the shade I chose online. It's kind of a blind buy, but I would absolutely go back and check out the other shades. I love it that much. Now because I'm buying so many blushes, I really haven't used it as much as I want and I honestly won't need to buy another blush for a very long time. But if I had to recommend a blush to somebody who maybe didn't stock up this year, this is worth checking out. It might even be my favorite cream blush. I would have to go through my entire inventory, but it's definitely up there. The only other blush I have here to talk about is this Chantecaille Flower Power Cheek Shade. 
It's just called the Flower Power Cheek Shade and both pieces from the collection make the list. I love this blush. I thought the packaging was so cute and really pretty. I kind of knew I was interested in the pieces as soon as I saw the sneak peek photos, but I didn't have a ton of expectations of this just because it looks so light. It's incredible. This it has a very kind of creamy powder texture as well. It reminds me a little bit more of the Pat McGrath Labs texture, but it's very luminous. It's almost a blush highlighter hybrid product, but the shimmer in this is unlike the shimmer in the Pat McGrath Labs in that it goes on so smooth. It doesn't really seem to emphasize texture on the skin, which shimmer does do that. It's so sad, but it is true. It happens to all of us. Somehow with this Chantecaille blush, even though it has luminosity to it, it just looks so angelic and smooth and just the lightest, most natural flush you've ever seen. Now, I'm not sure how this translates to other skin tones, but I can tell you if you have a fair light skin tone, this is going to show up beautifully on your skin. It doesn't have a punch. It doesn't have a lot of pigment like the Pat McGrath Labs, but it's just very light pink, so ethereal and just stunning. Stunning for spring, summer, but just one of the most beautiful makeup pieces in my collection. The packaging and the product. The powder is awesome. Now this was the first time I ever tried this blur powder. This is the Flower Power Perfect Blur Finishing Powder. This launched last year as part of their Hummingbird Spring Collection and it was so popular they brought it back again. I prefer this packaging to the Hummingbird so I'm glad I waited but the powder is so nice. It is incredibly finely milled and I really notice a difference between this and the powder I'm currently using up. I'm almost done. I can't wait to throw it in my empties basket. I'm currently using my By Terry Pressed Compact. I really like that powder. But with this one, I noticed that it does keep my face matter longer. Matter, is that a word? More matte. <laughs> it's definitely more mattifying than the By Terry Hyaluronic Powder. When I use this powder, no shine. It's incredible. So I think this would make a great touch-up powder just like a great setting powder. It doesn't really give coverage. It really is just going to set your makeup. So if you need to set, if you still like to set the under eye, set your T-zone, I can't recommend it enough. It's beautiful. All those blushes and I only have one bronzer to talk about today. Last year was the year we saw a ton of bronzers. This year was blush, but we did get this new Christian Dior bronzer. This is the Dior Forever Natural Bronze. I have the shade 05 Warm Bronze comes in this adorable refillable packaging, which somehow I have managed to not get this dirty. I don't really go out of my way to take care of it either. I just throw it back in the drawer, but it's held up quite nicely. I was scared that it was going to just absorb powders and products and get smeared and filthy really quickly, but it seems to be stain resistant, at least for the moment. But I love it. I think it's so nice. It is refillable. It's a bit thinner than I thought it was going to be, so it doesn't have the same wow impact as, say, the Gucci compacts that have that little bottom section to carry the brush. It's still gorgeous nonetheless. I love the stitching on the front. It's kind of reminiscent of a Lady Dior bag. And then when you open it up, the powder is really nice and it's made up of mostly natural ingredients. Dior is kind of moving in that direction of more natural. I think the powder looks really nice. It's a flattering shade and it's not too heavy. You really have to build up this bronzer, which I prefer. So I think it looks really nice and I like the matte finish of this bronzer. It's very flattering. One of those discoveries of the year. I'm not sure I love a lot of shimmer or luminosity in my blushes or bronzers. It depends on the product, but I think I've really come to appreciate matte face products including this bronzer. It's stunning. I only have one individual highlighter here to talk about and it's this Pearl de Lumiere from Chanel. This also launched as part of their spring collection. I wanna say it was the spring collection right around the time of the Fleur de Printemps palette. I love this highlighter and it looks so basic. I mean, the design on top is beautiful. The little pearls, it's stunning. But the shade is kind of deceiving because you look at it and you think, oh, that looks just like the metal peach or the ivory gold or some of the other shades that you might already have in your collection from Chanel, but it's actually pretty different on the skin. 
I did a video of my entire highlighter collection and I swatched them all so you can see all of the differences. I will link that video. I will also link all of the corresponding review videos for all of these products. That way if something sounds interesting but you want more information, it will be in the description box. It gives me that glass skin wet highlight look without a balmy texture. I don't know, it's just really beautiful. I have four eyeshadow palettes here to talk about and they're all smaller palettes. Starting with the Le Beige Collection from Chanel. Here I have Tender, I also have Intense, and I really love these palettes. I've come to really appreciate the Le Beige Collection and these Le Beige eyeshadow palettes because they're not as dusty as they once were. I think you get really decent color payoff. They're just easy to work with and they're flattering. This Tender palette is beautiful. I recently did a Get Ready With Me where I featured this palette. I also have a Get Ready With Me using the Intense palette. This one really surprised me. I thought of the two I would prefer Tender, but this Intense palette is amazing. Just really flattering, warm, bronzy golds. So perfect for summer makeup, kind of a bronzed goddess. And somebody mentioned that they thought it was more of a fall look, and I think it's actually a nice point because you could easily use this in fall winter as well. It's just versatile. This is a year round palette. It's an everyday palette. You can make it smoky and more dramatic. You can keep it really light and natural. And then we have the Christian Louboutin palette. I was so impressed with the texture of these eyeshadows. I really wasn't sure what to expect. I hoped for the best, but it turns out they are creamy. They are dreamy. I have found this palette to be very easy to use and I just love it. And I've been getting a lot of use out of it. That's really the most important thing. I picked up Rose Pigalle. So you have this really pretty pink and this kind of burgundy shade down here, but then the other shades in the palette are neutrals. So it can be colorful. It can also be just wearable, <laughs> wearable neutral makeup. This is my favorite shade in the palette, this warm orangey bronze. It is so nice. If I had to compare the texture to any other brand, it reminds me of Natasha Denona, but the really nice Natasha Denona eyeshadows. So I love it. And of course, we already talked about the palette. I think they're really fun and beautiful. And of course, they are refillable. This next palette is probably my favorite eyeshadow purchase of the year so far which really surprises me. I'm wearing it on my eyes today. This is the Voyeuristic Vixen quad from Pat McGrath Labs. This launched as part of that Divine Rose collection. I think I picked up the spring quad and I never really touch it. Did I pick that up? Am I regretting a purchase I didn't make? I don't remember. If I have it, I don't even think about it anymore. It has replaced my Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk palette as becoming my everyday palette, and I thought that would never happen. And I certainly wouldn't have guessed that with this palette because it's pretty sparkly, very different from that Charlotte Tilbury. But that palette has now been transferred to the second drawer, and now I keep this in the top drawer. Because I've played around with it a couple of times, I've kind of created my go-to looks. I think it's probably now my favorite Pat McGrath Labs. It's definitely my most used Pat McGrath Labs palette. I only have two other eye products here to talk about and only one of them I think launched this year. I'm not sure about this Marc Jacobs eyeliner, but I wear it all the time. It's worth talking about. It's this Blitzcoin Metallic Liquid Gel Eyeliner. I'm wearing it today. I wear it constantly. I think this is just a softer look. I find it to be more flattering overall, and it works for daytime. It also works for evening, and I just think it is so nice. So I love this bronzy liquid eyeliner. I purchased it this year. I have no idea when those launched, but it is on sale, and I think it's almost always on sale. So I'm kind of crossing my fingers, hoping that those eyeliners aren't going anywhere because it's now one of my favorite products. And then the second one is this Anastasia Brow Freeze Brow Styling, Styling Wax. I love this stuff for setting the brows. It is so nice. This is one of those products that from the moment I purchased it, I've used it almost every single day since. Every once in a while, I pull out my Benefit 24 hour brow gel. It holds the brow hairs in place. It's great for creating kind of a fluffier brow. Even if you don't want a fluff brow, if you just want to kind of brush them straight over or kind of the traditional way, this is still a great product. This maintains a bit of pliability because it's more of a wax. Doesn't really dry down. So I think it's just easy to work with. 
and I love it. I can't imagine not using it now. As many of you probably know, I've been on a bit of a low buy, no buy for lipsticks. I don't wanna say no buy because I don't wanna set myself up for failure. If something comes out and I wanna try it, I'm absolutely going to purchase, but I've really cut down on the amount of lipsticks I'm purchasing this year because I didn't finish a single lipstick in 2020. I think I have one in my empties bin already for this year, but I'm really doing my best to use up some of the lipsticks I already have before I invest in any new lipsticks. Lipsticks and eye products have a very strong expiration date. Yes, they might last you a couple years, but I've had to throw out several lipsticks because they were just covered in mold. They get really fuzzy. Look out for that. <laughs> You'll notice whenever I open the lipstick tube, it's like, ah, covered in fuzz because of the mold. So. You can't hold on to them forever, they will expire. But these I love. This is the new Rouge Coco Bloom formula. I just pulled out two. It's the formula that I love. So this is 116 Dream and I have 110 Chance. These are the two that I wear the most. Merve, I also get a lot of use out of, but I just think this is the best tube lipstick formula now from Chanel. It's very long wearing. They stain the lips, they feel really buttery. It's very pigmented. They almost coat the lips and it's like paint. You can no longer see your lip shining through. It helps cover up any creases or dryness on the lips as well. I think it, they look incredibly flattering and they feel really nice. So I love these. I only have one other product here to talk about and I went through all of my videos with a pretty fine tooth comb. It is possible I left something off the list. If I did, I will pin a comment, but this is the only complexion product. It's the new L'Essential High Perfection Foundation from Guerlain. I love this foundation. This is holy grail quality, just beautiful. Now, foundations are so personal, it really comes down to preference. So I love this formula, but I also really like a matte finish. I like full coverage. I like something that's long wearing. So if you prefer something that's really dewy, glowy, and just kind of light, like a CC cream, this is, of course, isn't going to be right for you, but I think this would be beautiful for photos, for brides, for special occasions. If you just like full coverage, maybe you save it for weekends. This is so nice. I think it might be my favorite full coverage, long wear, matte foundation. It would rival the Flawless, Airbrush Flawless from Charlotte Tilbury. I think this is better because it doesn't get sticky or tacky. I think it just applies better to the skin. This would also probably be better, I would say, than the Ultra La Tint from Chanel. I just prefer it. Here I have an honorable mention that I'd like to add to the list with a little baby asterisk. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Instant Look of Love in a Palette. I picked up shade Glowing Beauty. I really like this face palette. I think it is beautiful. I'm very happy with the packaging. The size of the palette is amazing. The price is incredible and the quality of the products inside is great. Now, the reason this doesn't make the main list is because, is it something that I absolutely need? No, I could have absolutely saved the money and I don't think I would have felt like I was really missing out. So is it best of the best? I don't think it is quite up there. It's really great and I would definitely recommend it for somebody who maybe doesn't have a huge makeup collection. Maybe you like something that's more compact and you're constantly traveling or you like to take a small makeup bag or, you know, if this is the type of product that appeals to you, it's right for you, you'll be very happy. I think I'll most likely reserve this for when I'm traveling somewhere and that's just not that often. So as much as this is a great palette, I think it's really only amazing best of the best for certain people with a very specific lifestyle or makeup preference. That completes my list of the best luxury purchases I've made so far this year. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I want to hear from you guys. What have been your favorite makeup purchases of 2021? Drop me a comment. We'll keep the conversation going there. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned, everything on my face down in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.